What's going on guys, it's your average consumer. And by now, I feel like a lot of us techies have heard of the Snapdragon 888 processor. It's like in all of the latest Android flagships today, but one thing that we haven't really talked about or really delved into is what makes the 888 so good when it comes to the cameras. And over here, we've got the OnePlus 9 Pro, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Pro, and the Oppo Find X3 Pro. So lots of pro grade things over here, folks, but it's all possible thanks to 888 chip. Now let's talk about some of the cool things you probably didn't even know the smartphone in your pocket was capable of. Now, like I said, the Snapdragon 888 is the chipset that we've been seeing in all of the flagship devices this year that have been big on their cameras, like the Galaxy S21 Ultra, OnePlus 9 Pro, and a few more. And that 888 chip allows for some pretty impressive features and capabilities like staggered HDR image sensors, uh, recording 4K HDR photos with multiple lenses simultaneously, a new low light architecture so that we can take brighter photos in near darkness, and even be able to take up to 120 high resolution burst photos. This is thanks to the Qualcomm Spectra 580 image signal processor, which we'll continue to call ISP, but it features the first triple ISP for Snapdragon, which allows a lot to happen at once. And Qualcomm Technologies has worked with a few different manufacturers to get their camera systems to take full advantage of everything their latest chipset has to offer. And we're seeing that come to life with some of the devices I mentioned earlier, especially the Xiaomi Mi 11 Pro. But you know, we're talking about all of these features. Let's actually go test them out and show you guys what this chipset and these cameras are capable of. All right guys, so we are currently in the other part of the studio. So what we're gonna be testing out right now is staggered HDR. And basically what staggered HDR is, it's using computational photography to take multiple images and merge them together. Uh, they're all at different exposures, so some photos will be really bright, some really dark, and then it makes them all into one image so that you can see like really bright areas in a photo as well as dark areas and you get all the detail. Now we've seen this kind of technology before in like actual DSLR cameras, things of that nature, uh, but now we're gonna be seeing it on a smartphone. And look, like right here, we've got the perfect spot. Jay, is it over? is it overexposed on your screen? Yes. Like, does that just look all white yeah. to you? Yeah. All right, guys, so you kind of get an idea. We're gonna have this entirely white area because of the sun. So let's say I wanna take a picture of something like my old school 100,000 subscriber YouTube plaque, which is covered in a bit of dust. Uh, let's see if I try to take a picture of this in this spot. And you can see the area on the floor is so overexposed. It's like all white looking. And boom, that should be it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that, you guys. So it brought back all the detail in that overexposed area. So this was all white before, but on the actual photo, you can see the tiles, you can see the USB cable, you can see the details on the Gundam in the back. So that's actually really cool. And that's what you expect from like a really good HDR photo. Those details just brought back to life. Uh, nothing too dark, nothing too bright. You're just kind of able to see everything. All right, so let's try something else. Let's let's bring up the shades, right? Overexposed, huh, Jay? Oh uh, man, this is gonna be rough on the cameras. It's basically a white. It's just white behind me, okay? Okay. All right, so we got this super bright background, PS5 control over here, which is great because it's black and white, perfect contrast for HDR photos. All right, so let's go ahead. We got our controller here. We got that bright background. So we're gonna go ahead and take this picture. As you guys can see, that background the, through the window looks really bright. Usually that would be an issue, but let's take this photo and see. All right, the HDR brought back a ton of detail. Uh, so we're not losing any information here. It actually looks really good. Uh, nothing looks really overexposed. This is exactly what you want in an HDR shot. So like I said, it's combining multiple images shot at different exposures so that it can create the best possible image so you can see everything within the photo very clearly. If I were to, let's, let me show you guys what this would look like with HDR off. As you guys can see, there's a very clear difference. And that's the kind of HDR that you wanna see in today's flagship phones. Now that Snapdragon 888 chip also allows for computational HDR video capture. So basically, 
is similar to what we saw with the staggered HDR for photos. Um, so we're gonna get that HDR capture here uh, and that's all possible thanks to that Qualcomm Spectra 580 ISP that we mentioned earlier. Now, of course, to be able to do 4K HDR video capture on a smartphone, you're gonna need a lot of processing power, which we have here. Uh, so we've got the Oppo Find X3 Pro. Let's see what we could get with this thing. Carl, you're gonna be our subject, man. So Carl not only works because of his darker skin tone, uh, but with the light in the background, it should make for a really good subject. Well, Carl, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good. You know, hands don't hurt. <laughs> so one thing you'll notice, for our normal cameras, we need an ND filter to kind of handle all of this brightness. Uh, but we're doing this on this camera without any kind of ND filter. It's just straight up camera. So check this out. We're able to see Carl clear as day over here. We are even able to see the sky, clouds, everything, all the details that we want. If I were to tweak this, maybe I'd drop the highlights just a smidge. That's the video editor in me. Uh, but overall, for someone, the average person who's gonna go out there, grab a phone like this, they're gonna be pretty happy with the content because they can see everything really clearly, colors are popping. This is what you wanna see in a shooting scenario where there's like a ton of light still being able to capture all the details. And for my camera nerds out there, we gotta give some props to the Apple Find X3 Pro because it is the first smartphone camera to be able to take HEIC photos in 10-bit. And to put this in perspective, all others are 8-bit HEIC, which is about 16.7 million shades of colors, while 10-bit is over a billion. Now we mentioned before being able to get up to 120 high resolution burst photos. Uh, we got the OnePlus 9 over here. I believe this one does uh, 99 burst photos in one go. I think every phone might be a little bit different, uh, but with the 888, you're able to do up to 120 depending on the phone. So we got our subject Carl over here, right? All right, so Carl has a bunch of hair. I figured he could shake it up and since it's like a really fast motion, I figured we'd be able to catch everything with those burst photos. So Carl, you ready? I'm ready. Ready to smack yourself I've in the been, face I've with some with waiting, some dreads? I've been waiting for that. It's about to hurt. Let's go. <laughs> All right, and go. Look at that thing move. All right, Carl, you're good. Out. <laughs> so we got 99 photos, and it can even detect which one it thinks is the best. And it's kind of cool because we were able to capture every movement that Carl made. And the fact that this was able to happen like within like a second or two, it's kind of nuts. So where something like this is going to be very useful is if like, you know, maybe your kid is doing something really interesting or you're at a sports event and you want to capture a special play, you'll be able to get like the perfect shot. So there are a lot of instances where burst photos are really useful. And the photos came out pretty decent here, but when we were outdoors, they came out even better. We were able to see like every strand of Carl's hair. Jay even got in on the action too. Photos just came out really, really well, considering how many it was taking in a very, very short amount of time. How's your head though, Carl? It's fine. It's fine? Good. <laughs> now, of course, we gotta hit on the low light capabilities. It's daytime, but we do have a pretty dark equipment closet. So I figured why not go in there, see what we're able to pull off with very, very little lighting. Dang, it is pretty dark in here. <laughs> All right, you guys, so let's get a nighttime shot. Uh, let's just grab a random lens. I remember I used to use this lens back in the day. Sigma. The Sigma. All right, so yeah, this is the lens we're gonna use. I'm gonna put this right here, and let's see what we can get, you guys. Ooh, this is dark. It just went into like ultra dark mode. You guys see that at the top? Oh. That's better than what we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. So it definitely can pull off some great shots in the dark. Now, let me see, I'm gonna angle it this way. Processing and, wow, that's dope. And it's actually pretty sharp too, you see that? This is way clearer than what we can actually see with our eyes, so that's actually really impressive. And what we're seeing here with this low light performance isn't brand new stuff. Cameras have been doing this for a little while now, but it's one of those important features that you can kind of forget about, but it's a really underrated feature, especially if you go out at night, you wanna take pictures with your friends. If you're going to a restaurant, you wanna take a nice picture. There are a lot of situations where you're not gonna have great lighting. And with the improvements we're seeing to low light photography with this new chip, it is going to be a welcome feature that everyone can take advantage of. Now, one really underrated feature is being able to record with multiple cameras here. So if we go into the app and then we go to, let's see, multi-cam, 
check this out you guys all the different shooting options are available right here uh, we can combine them to shoot at once or we can go ahead and keep them as separate videos. Now, this kind of flexibility is awesome. There have been plenty of times where I wish I could get like a really wide shot and also use the main camera sensor because the qualities tend to be pretty different. Uh, and this gives you the flexibility to do that. So if you wanna make sure you're not missing anything, but you're also getting like a really clean image with the wide and ultra wide, you can do that. I think that is super cool. So we got like the wide here and then the standard here, or we can combine it with like the telephoto, or if you really wanna zoom in, get that 10 times zoom, you have that option. As somebody who loves video, this is like a must have feature. And the fact that it's even able to display everything here all at once, that's cool. We even got the front facing camera here, you guys. And then when we wanna actually record, you guys can see we've got it just rolling here right now. Boom, multiple angles at the same time, super dope. And there you have it, you guys. This was just like a little bit of insight into some of the cool things that you can do with a phone powered by the Snapdragon 888 processor. As you can see, there were some cool features that you probably never thought about, like multicam, and some features that you wholeheartedly expect to be in your phone, like HDR photos, being able to take really low light photos, uh, but 4K HDR, that's something that's really new and it's all possible here. Not to mention some of the other cool things that this latest chip is able to bring to the table, like when it comes to gaming, processing power, all that kind of stuff, uh, you get a lot with this chipset. So when you're on the market looking to pick up a new phone, if you see a phone that you like with the Snapdragon 888, you know that it's going to have a lot of power behind it and it allows you to do a lot of cool creative stuff. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you wanna learn more about the Snapdragon chip, I'll have links down below in the description. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. Till next video, guys, it's your average consumer. Peace. That's impressive, huh, Carl?